so now we are going to read about the pox virus infection so in the pox virus infections we have to talk about the three viruses in the group that is the variola virus the vaccinia virus and the molluscum contagiosum virus now if we see what is the importance of reading all of these viruses so the variola virus is the agent of the smallpox that's why it's important although the smallpox has been eradicated from the world still we have to read about this variola virus because uh, it's a potential agent of infection or uh, of it's, it's a potential bioterrorism agent as well that may cause uh, may be used to cause the bioterrorisms uh, since the vaccination against the smallpox has been stopped uh, after its eradication in 1980 so that's why we have to know about the variola virus then we have the vaccinia virus why is that important so vaccinia virus is important because that is used for the development of the vaccine against the smallpox with which we had eradicated the virus in the 1980 now coming to the each virus individually so first we will talk about the smallpox virus uh, that is sometimes asked in why was so the smallpox virus causes the smallpox and the smallpox was declared eradicated in 1980 by who this smallpox virus is also called as the variola virus uh, and that variola virus causes this the smallpox now the uh, since we have talked about the eradication of this who eradication of this smallpox by who still the strains of this virus are maintained at two points in the world now these two points are one is in the russia and the other one is in the usa you may remember these uh, centers at which these uh, virus strains are still uh, maintained till date or you may not remember as well uh, because the, it is not so important so those two centers are the cdc that is the center for disease control and prevention in the usa and the center for research on virology in the russia so these are the two centers at which this virus strain of the, uh, of the variola uh, virus is still maintained now the sometimes the question asked in the explain why in the university exams or in why was is that why it why it was so uh, you know easy to eradicate the smallpox why eradication of smallpox was so easy so these five reasons should be on your tips so those uh, reasons are that there is no animal reservoir and only humans are affected with this variola virus that is smallpox occurred only to the humans there was no animal reservoir to reserve uh, i mean to act as a reservoir of that virus to cause infection uh, i mean later on okay so there was no animal reservoir that was the first reason for eradication of smallpox number two reason was there were no carriers if someone has got the uh, virus then he will develop the infection he will not enter into the carrier stage that means it did not had it did not has the i mean carrier uh, stage okay uh, smallpox does not believe in carrier stage okay so there are no carriers number 3 reason is that the it, the diagnosis of the smallpox was very easy because it has a particular type of rashes we will discuss about the characteristic of rashes and we will also discuss the difference between the rashes of the smallpox and the chickenpox as well so the number 4 reason is that the vaccine which was developed against this smallpox disease by using the vaccinia strain of the pox virus that vaccine was very much effective that again was a important reason behind the eradication of the smallpox virus the number 5 reason is that there was strong determination and cooperation between all the countries all the different uh, organizations to eradicate the smallpox so there was a strong determination to eradicate and that's why it was possible to eradicate the virus as well now coming to the clinic this uh, five reasons should be remembered because uh, they are asked in the university exams and sometimes in the vivas also so you should remember those now coming to the clinical features of the smallpox infection 
or the uh, smallpox virus infection or the variola virus infection so the clinical features of the smallpox is that first of all there will be fever then there will be appearance of the rashes now the rashes uh, once the rashes will appear the fever will subside this was uh, not the case i mean this this is in content i mean uh, this is different from the chicken pox okay where we have seen that in the chicken pox the fever occurs with each crop of rashes and the rashes appear in multiple crops but in case of small pox there is a single crop of rashes and the uh, just as the uh, rashes appear the fever subsides in case of the small pox now the features of the rashes is that there is centrifugal distribution of the rashes while in case of chicken pox it was a centripetal distribution then the fever subsides with the appearance of the rashes uh, as there is a single crop of rash appearing in the smallpox but this is in uh, and this is different from the chicken pox where uh, multiple uh, crops of the rashes were appearing and they were uh, each of the crops were with uh, were associated with the fever the number third uh, characteristic of the rash is that these rashes are multilocular rashes while in case of the chicken pox there was unilocular rashes and those uh, rashes appear like dew drop in case of the chicken pox rashes now how will we diagnose this small pox infection before the diagnosis again here also since the common present uh, the presentation mode of presentation of smallpox is the rashes so we have to collect the specimen and the of course the specimen of choice will be the scrappings from those rashes so the specimen that is collected is the scrappings from the rashes then we have the direct detection so direct detection can be done by staining okay so we uh, directly prepare a smear and we stain it and uh, in that stain under microscope we can see the intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies which are called as the pastian bodies this should be remembered by heart you should remember this name pastian body because it is as in the mcqs so pastian bodies are seen in case of the small pox or the variola virus infection then we have the elect electron microscopic view where we see brick shaped appearance of the virus so again that is an also a, a important feature the important characteristic which will uh, lead us to the diagnosis of the smallpox so these two uh, features are very important to diagnose the, the smallpox infection then we have egg inoculation so uh, when the virus is inoculated on the egg there is formation of pox on the chorioallantoic membrane so in this way we can diagnose the smallpox infection then we have the vaccination the vaccination is done with the live vaccinia vaccine uh, that is a live attenuated vaccine and it is not given nowadays because it has been uh, i mean the smallpox virus has been eradicated that's why this vaccine was also discontinued after the uh, after the eradication of the virus as declared by the who so vaccination is discontinued now next we will talk about the vaccinia virus so this was all about the uh, variola virus causing a smallpox now we will talk about the vaccinia virus which is used to produce the vaccine against the smallpox so this is non pathogenic to human that's why we use it for the uh, production of the uh, that's why we were using this uh, virus for uh, producing the vaccine against the smallpox and the inclusion bodies that is produced by this vaccinia virus is called uh, as the guanieri body again this is a very important mcq you should remember it by heart again that the inclusion body in case of vaccinia virus is the guarnieri body now the antibody produced against the vaccinia virus were effective against the variola virus that's the basis of uh, development of the vaccine against the smallpox now it's very easy that the antibodies which were produced against the vaccinia virus were effective against the variola virus as well that's why uh, what what does the scientist uh, think uh, what did the scientists th uh, think they thought 
that we can develop the vaccine against the smallpox with this vaccinia virus so that's why it was easy to eradicate the smallpox because the scientist developed the live attenuated vaccinia virus vaccine against the smallpox so these are the important point about the vaccinia virus so if you ask me one point to remember if you want to only remember one point about the vaccinia virus then i will uh, i will tell you to remember this point this please remember this uh, inclusion body name of the vaccinia virus in case of variola virus it was pastian body in case of vaccinia virus it is guarnieri body now the next uh, pox virus in sequence is the molluscum contagiosum virus so next we will talk about the molluscum contagiosum virus where the clinical features is similar to the uh, smallpox there will be uh, you know there will be rashes and rashes will be there there will be fever and all there will be so a uh, pink uh, multiple skin lesions with central dimple all over the body except palm and soles you need to need not to remember all of these you can remember there will be pink multiple skin lesions just like uh, rashes will be appear uh, uh, rashes will be appearing uh, like the pox okay and there will be associated fever as well but yeah you can remember this classical feature as well next is the how will we diagnose this molluscum contagiosum virus so again here we have to take the skin scrapings uh, as a, as our specimen for the diagnosis and after staining and microscopy we can see the molluscum bodies this is a uh, uh, very easy to remember as the name of the virus is molluscum contagiosum virus the intrusion body is the molluscum bodies these are intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies these are intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies so these help in the diagnosis of the molluscum contagiosum virus infection so this is enough for the molluscum contagiosum virus uh, the most important point about these pox viruses is the uh, inclusion bodies okay so you should must remember the inclusion body names and uh, this is all about the pox viruses.